the four key financial statements required by the SEC for reporting to shareholders are, the income statement, the balance sheet, the statement of stockholders' equity, and the statement of cash flows. Number 1, Income Statement The income statement provides a financial summary of the firm's operating results during a specified period. Most common are income statements covering a one-year period ending at a specified date, ordinarily December 31st of the calendar year. Many large firms, however, operate on a 12-month financial cycle, or fiscal year, that ends at a time other than December 31st. In addition, monthly income statements are typically prepared for use by management, and quarterly statements must be made available to the stockholders of publicly owned corporations. This table here presents a company's income statements for the years ended December 31, 2015 and 2014. Number 2. Balance Sheet The balance sheet presents a summary statement of the firm's financial position at a given time. The statement balances the firm's assets, what it owns, against its financing, which can be either debt, what it owes, or equity, what was provided by owners. A company's balance sheets as of December 31st of 2015 and 2014 are presented in this table. They show a variety of asset, liability, debt, and equity accounts. An important distinction is made between short-term and long-term assets and liabilities. The current assets and current liabilities are short-term assets and liabilities, which means that they are expected to be converted into cash, current assets, or paid current liabilities, within one year or less. All other assets and liabilities, along with stockholders' equity, which is assumed to have an infinite life, are considered long-term, or fixed, because they are expected to remain on the firm's books for more than one year. As is customary, the assets are listed from the most liquid, cash, down to the least liquid. Marketable securities are very liquid short-term investments, such as U.S. Treasury bills or certificates of deposit, held by the firm. Because they are highly liquid, marketable securities are viewed as a form of cash, near cash. Accounts receivable represent the total monies owed the firm by its customers on credit sales. Inventories include raw materials, work in process, partially finished goods, and finished goods held by the firm. The entry for gross fixed assets is the original cost of all fixed, long-term assets owned by the firm. Net fixed assets represent the difference between gross fixed assets and accumulated depreciation, the total expense recorded for the depreciation of fixed assets. The net value of fixed assets is called their book value. Number 3. Statement of Retained Earnings The Statement of Retained Earnings is an abbreviated form of the Statement of Stockholders' Equity. Unlike the Statement of Stockholders' Equity, which shows all equity account transactions that occurred during a given year, the statement of retained earnings reconciles the net income earned during a given year, and any cash dividends paid, with the change in retained earnings between the start and the end of that year. This table presents the statement for a company for the year ended December 31, 2015. Number 4. Statement of Cash Flows the Statement of Cash Flows is a summary of the cash flows over the period of concern. The statement provides insight into the firm's operating, investment, and financing cash flows and reconciles them with changes in its cash and marketable securities during the period. A company's Statement of Cash Flows for the year ended December 31, 2015, is presented in this table.